to this spot, Buccaneers, Colts, Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis, Indiana. We have the total up here. Let me get the side for market moves. Okay. We have Indianapolis opening up at minus – well, that was at bet online early. Minus one and a half at Pinnacle, and it's now at two and a half. The two and a half is juiced towards the Buccaneers, not by much. We had a one-point move towards the Colts. In the total side of things, we're sitting at a 43 and a half. This opened up at 42 and a half. One point move towards the over. Let's move on to the cash flow here for this spot. We have, oh, that's a Panthers game. Sorry. Uh, move over here. We have 45% of the tickets and 70% of the cash on the Indianapolis Colts. 54% of the tickets and 99% of the cash on the over. Harold Williams leaning to the wards of the Colts. Uh, Terry Walker's on the Colts. All right. Buccaneers coming off their fifth loss in six games, 27 14 setback at San Francisco. Baker Mayfield was 29 45 for 246 yards, touchdown, interception. He also lost the fumble. He looked pretty good. Kate Otten led receivers with four catches of 49 yards. Kate Otten had a touchdown pass that he should have caught late in that game. Uh, Mike Evans, that was his only miss, though. He's only targeted five times, caught four of them. And he's a pretty trustworthy dude. Uh, Mike Evans caught five passes, 43 yards in the touchdown. Rashad White struggled, ran nine times for 30 yards, did score a touchdown. They went 7-14 to 14 on third down against the Niners. You know, they're 15th in the league, converting 40.6% of third downs. They were 2-4 of four in the red zone. They struggled there all year. They're 28th in the league, scoring touchdowns, just 46.4% of red zone opportunities. The secondary allowed two long touchdown scores. You know, they, they play man-to-man. -man. It, it, it can hurt them at times. Pass rush had four sacks, five quarterback hits. They held the Niners to just four of ten on third down. This has been a big weak spot for them this year. They're 30th in the league, allowing opponents to convert 46.7% of third downs. While their third down defense continues to be weak, like it has been all year, <clears throat> their red zone defense continues to be the best in the league. They allowed touchdowns on just 34.4% of opportunities and held the Niners to two of four. The Bucks had injuries to very important pieces of their defense jamel dean he left the game after Ayuk burned him for a bomb and he left on a cart i was trying to get the update on it maybe you guys have it now because they all these guys that are uh, mris today carlton davis and levante david uh it's it's believed dave strained is growing just to what extent uh this is a big problem for them these injuries colts coming off their bye week they were last seen a 10-6 road win in germany over new england what a crazy season this has been. You know, I'm on there over six and a half wins, and I should be very pleased at five and five, but it's just been such a roller coaster ride. Three weeks ago, before these last two weeks where their defense looked great, they were allowing 28.6 points per game. They had allowed 114 points over a three game losing streak. They just waved Shaq Leonard. And, and when I even said one of those games, Shaq came back and he was just, it was empty. And he's only 28, but. Sometimes in this sport, a 28-year-old can get beat up pretty bad. The Colts' defense has been so much better. And we've seen teams step up when they get a, you know, a high, highly thought of star on the defense out of the room. We watched it with the Broncos and Randy Gregory. I mean, that was probably the best example of a defense that was falling apart, gets rid of Randy Gregory. We haven't seen it from the commanders, but maybe they gave up too much. You know, Kenny Moore has scored more touchdowns over the past two weeks than they've allowed. It's crazy. What, a playoff push possible? I mean, Steichen's doing a hell of a job. Their defense is sixth in strip sacks, takeaways, sacks, tackles for losses. They're in the top six in all of those. And after 10 games, you know, they have a really weak schedule, really weak schedule coming up. Uh, they, had, they had five sacks against the Patriots. They have 30. That's fourth in the league. They're 14th in third down defense line conversions 38.4% of the time. They're 19th in red zone defense line touchdowns 54.8% of the time. The offense does not look good, though. They have scored two offensive touchdowns in two weeks. Uh, they've scored three offensive touchdowns in the last five halves. They're 16th on third down offensively, 39.2%. They're very good in the red zone, sixth in the league, scoring touchdowns on 60% of their drives. And Ryan Kelly, we expect to be back from concussion protocol. He's expected to be back, but he hasn't cleared it yet. Take it away for us here, Troy. We have the Bucks and the Colts. Yep, just for a lot of things you just said, I'm starting to lose confidence in this Bucks team. The defense continues to regress despite their unbelievable performance so far year to date in the red zone. 
the P- PFF has this team graded out as 31st in the NFL on the, on defense in general overall. That's pretty damn uh, telling to me because this has always been known as a defensive team. I said it again. I said it before. I want to say it again. This is no longer a, a defensive unit. This is an offensive unit. Play action. After weeks one through four, this play action game went into the trash. Once it got on film, defenses knew how to take advantage or, you know, you know, learn how to shut it down. Some people put it on film early and it's been trash ever since. But still, this team is only one game out of uh, first place. And this team is 5-0 and ATS on the road as a dog this season. This is kind of where the Bucks, where you want to buy the Bucks. But on the other side, you have the Colts in a very similar situation. Not a very good record, but they control their own destiny within the division. They're still playing for something. Very tough game. I don't have nothing on it, Jimmy. I'm not very, I'm not, I probably won't have any action on it. Yeah, this is one of the, the bum fights I do find kind of difficult. I, I, it's just the Colts have been on such a roller coaster ride. I, I don't, and I faded them. I was on the Patriots in Germany. That was a loss. Gagnon says Bucks are playing well, but don't forget they played the 49ers last week. Spending penny bombs on the Bucks plus two and a half and the money line. North Ender leaning towards the Bucks. All right, this is a tough one. Uh, this is a tough one that I don't mind moving on from at this point. I was wondering if something would illuminate, but I tell you what, I tell you what, with Jamel, we you need to know what's going on with Jamel Dean Carlton Davis, and, and I'm I'm pretty certain that Levante David will not be in the lineup. And with those three guys out of the defense, do you still want the under at that point? I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's move on. 